When a client comes in and says, we feel like we're behind in mobile, yep. what's the first thing you tell them? Sadly, you're, you probably are behind in mobile. It's a very easy thing to be behind in. Um, I think we start by just looking at what they have, whether they're a client that maybe doesn't have a, um, a mobile optimized or responsive site. It might be a client that has five, five apps and is trying to consolidate. And it might be someone who has never touched mobile but feels so strongly about something like native or beacons that they want to jump all in. So there's a number of different places to start. Sometimes you hear what the client will say is, is that, uh, God, man, it's expensive to yeah, build an app. It is. And, and, <laughs> and can, you know, I, this responsive web thing, can, can we just do that and just see yeah. how it goes? Because I'm not sure I'm ready to make the investment. Yeah. I know that you, you, we've talked about that. Uh, dive into that, that question sure. of the, you're at that crossroads. Mm -hmm. You know, and to me, I think it frames the discussion as, do you want to lead or follow? Yes, so. absolutely. So, question comes up a lot, and I've worked in mobile for upwards of nine years now. So, the app versus mobile web question is one that comes up quite often. So, hang on a second. So, nine years. Nine years. So, it was uh, ringtones and wallpapers. It was all about ringtones, wallpaper, a lot of SMS. What else was really cool? And then? how far where you could get on the uh, carrier deck, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> All about the carrier deck, being able to own that Verizon and AT&T platform and have those ringback tones. Yeah. All yes. of that. That is where I started in mobile. And one of my first clients was Volkswagen. This is back when Volkswagen was launching uh, Real Racing GTI. So they had a task of launching a new vehicle. They had a very small marketing budget, and they turned to mobile. So. Just um, by chance, I ended up launching not only an app, uh, a site, a entire SMS program, everything all in one for that initial client. And you know, going back to the question about apps for sites, having the having a mobile site and having a destination that is not only search friendly but available to anyone, you know, very low barriers to entry is fundamental. I think it is a, a starting point, and I think apps can be used in a number of ways. We've gone away from the mentality of build an app, people will come. People now understand that it's very expensive, to your earlier point. Building an app isn't something that you're going to do and have it be a month-long commitment. But this is a multi-year commitment. And so one of the trends that's been interesting to me to watch, uh, not only on the agency side, but also as a consumer, is whether or not you're building your own app or you're partnering for distribution. And there's some great examples to look at. So someone like Starbucks, for example, they initially uh, put their bets into Square from a mobile payments perspective and then decided to pull away from that. They now have their own app. It's very focused on loyalty. They have order ahead capabilities and they decided Starbucks is a brand and we want to offer things that we are going to offer on our own. We're not going to partner with anyone. It will be ours to own. We have uh, one of my clients, Johnson & Johnson, for the Bengay brand in which we were trying to reach a younger demographic. We were trying to reach millennials. And instead of building our own app experience, we partnered with someone, specifically with Keep, to reach younger millennials that are focused on fitness and to be part of the conversation. So there's also brands like Mercedes, for example, that uses both sides of the equation. They have their own app, and it's very focused on models and price and, and configurations, which is very important for automotive. But Mercedes also works with other apps like Instagram. I thought they did an amazing job at doing a build your own car configurator within the Instagram UI in which you're porting an experience and potentially reaching new audiences. What are you seeing as far as, what, would, what, do, you, what do you think we are in 2015 with uh, creativity and creative ad units on mobile? So I think we, um, we're stuck. There's a lot of innovation that's taking place with some of the newer platforms, whether it be Vine or Snapchat or Shazam. There's a lot of potentials for really cool content, even in the Swift media space, so talking about emojis. Um, there's some really cool work, and I think as an industry, we're almost pinholing ourselves by the push towards programmatic. So that's been interesting to watch because we have all this really cool stuff happening. We have this push towards efficiency and increased targeting options, and they don't necessarily complement one another all the time. Um, mobile video is an area that has been coming up a lot in conversation. It's an area that I think is a great growth opportunity. And the reason is because it fulfills both sides of the equation very well. Not only has the creative side in which we can do DR, branding, uh, we can even do shoppable video ads now, but it has the programmatic side in which we can serve with efficiency and with targeting. And that's part of the reason that I think Mobile video, um, I guess it solves mobile's creative weakness. 